welcome back to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug, and thanks for joining me for another Pen Resurrection Sunday. Last Sunday, I showed you a bag of pens, and the piece of resistance of the bag haul was this 1955 to 1959 Schaefer Thin Model Clipper Snorkel Fountain Pen and Pencil Set. Janice picked it up at a flea market just a couple of weeks ago for next to nothing dollars, and I was really excited to get the pen working again. It has a beautiful Triumph style tubular 14 karat gold nib and a lovely gold and chrome cap, not to mention the very nice dove gray barrel. I've done two other Schaefer snorkel restorations, a 1952 Schaefer Valiant, which I sold, but you can see the restoration by clicking right up here, and this 1960 Schaefer PFM, and you can see the restoration of this pen by clicking up there as well. You can probably tell by the lack of a smile on my face in the thumbnail for this video that I wasn't successful with this one, unfortunately. I'm pretty bummed about it too, because this was a beautiful pen and pencil set, and the nib on this pen is delightful. But you can't save them all, I guess. I debated whether to publish this resurrection failure or not, but I've decided that viewers might be interested in the process of restoring the most complex filling system ever designed for a fountain pen, the snorkel. And there also might be some snorkel experts out there that might have some suggestions for how I might be able to get the touchdown filling system working again. I'll take you through the steps I took to get the pen working, replacing the seals and gaskets and the touchdown filler sack and how the nib writes right now. <laughs> So I thought we'd go ahead and triage this pen. You saw this in the Bag O' Pens episode uh, from the Bag O' Pens that I got from pen friend Janice. Thank you, Janice. This was the piece of resistance that I appreciated in that bag. And it is a pen and pencil set from Schaefer's. And it says Schaefer's new snorkel pen. This is a Schaefer Clipper thin model that was made between 1955 and 1959. It has a gold and chrome cap with the white dot. A gold cap band says made in Canada on the back and has a gray body. So, and there's the matching pencil as well in this set. Let's triage this pen and see what needs doing. From the outside, the cap has the typical wear marks of 60 plus years of life. Gold filled clip, which pivots into the cap, which is nice. Uh, of course, I said Schaefer's made in Canada on the back. There is some brassing, what looks like brassing or tarnish on the gold parts. The clip doesn't look too bad, lots of wear on it, but there is some, a little bit of what looks like tarnishing there. These are typically gold filled, so I expect that to polish up very nicely. Uh, the barrel has typical wear marks on it. There is a very, very light imprint. Maybe you can see it. It says W.A. Schaefer, Penco of Canada Limited, Goderich, Ontario, made in Canada. And there's the blind cap, but you can see that there's a crack right here. That worries me because if that lets air escape, this is useless. Uh, that little hole right there is where the air is supposed to escape, and I'm not sure what might happen if that crack goes all the way through. So let's unscrew the barrel, which comes off in less than a turn. Yeah, three quarters of a turn. And we see the black plastic section and the tubular 14 karat gold nib that says 14 karat 585, made in Canada, Schaefer's and there's some tarnishing on that. I think that's all just old ink right there But that's going to polish up very nicely and there's the ebonite feed Snorkels in a bit sideways right now when Janice handed this to me at the pen club meeting I took it apart almost immediately to see what could come apart and So I unscrewed this bit. Well first let's extend the snorkel by turning the blind cap and that extends the snorkel and the touchdown filler comes out and there's no drag on that whatsoever so I'm feeling no uh, suction. And then it's easier to unscrew the barrel. I've done nothing to this pen. This is the way it sort of came apart in my hands when Janice handed it to me and the snorkel came right out like that. 
and the spring and the sack protector all came apart. There's the snorkel unit. And I pushed on this to see whether it was pliable or not. That's the sack inside the sack protector. And it cracked. So that's all desiccated sack inside there. There's the end of it right there. So we'll have to get that out. That's a bit of a job. And getting this snorkel point out without damaging it, that's a bit of a job as well. So that needs to be done, and I knew that. The spring is in really good shape. No rust or anything. Sometimes these are so rusted so badly uh, that yeah, they need to be replaced. There's a screw down at the bottom of that, which takes a slot like that. And you can take that blind cap right off of there. You can see that there's a crack there that kind of corresponds to that crack there. So it's like it was stuck and someone forced it and it just cracked right across. So I'm gonna try to take that blind cap off first with my slot screwdriver, and there it goes. And there's a seal inside there that we have to tease out, but I'm particularly concerned about that crack. And that allows us to, well, let's get that screw out of there. There we go. Don't wanna lose that screw. And we can tap the touchdown out of the barrel. There's the touchdown unit and it's clean as a whistle. And there's a seal right there, that black ring right there. But there's that crack as well. And you can see, probably see that it goes all the way through. I'm wondering how much air will get expressed through there, but we still have to replace that seal out of there. So we got those pieces apart. This also, without any soaking or anything, I was able to unscrew the nib unit and there is a point seal right there. There we go. So there's the old point seal. It's hard as a rock. That's a rubber seal that needs to be replaced. So there, there's this, there's that ring right there, and that new one goes right inside that nib unit. And then there's the, the sack itself inside the sack protector. So lots of parts here. I have a Schaefer parts kit for a shaver snorkel. Let's dump the parts out here. And there are the four parts that I got in my snorkel repair kit. There's the necked sack right there. There is the O-ring that goes in the end of the barrel right there. There is this seal that goes at the end of the point right there and seals the snorkel tube itself. And then there's this seal right here which goes in the bottom of the blind cap. Let's see if we can tease the old one out of here. Get my dental tool out and hook that seal out of there. And there's the old one. Here's the old one on the left and the new one on the right. And there's the old point seal on the left and the new point seal on the right. So there's a number of things to do. We have to get that point out of there. Uh, there's various techniques for that. This is very delicate, this tube. See, there's plastic on the inside of it there, or ebonite. I think it's probably ebonite. And that's probably ebonite there, too. Yep, ebonite, black hard rubber. And so we're going to get that out of there so we can get at that sack protector tube and get the old desiccated sack out of there. I have an idea for soaking this in rubbing alcohol because rubbing alcohol dissolves latex. So we'll give that a try. We have to soak all these parts in pen flush and get all the old extraneous ink out. Same thing with the cap. It's got old, old ink in there, so we're gonna scrub that out. So lots of cleaning first, and then we'll get after that, polishing up that nib. We will dip test that nib to see whether it writes okay. I'm afraid I can't really determine whether this resurrection is gonna be successful or not until I've done the entire resurrection and see whether it actually sucks up ink and whether this leaks right here. So we're going to go through the steps anyway and then see whether we're successful in the end. So I've still got the cap in the ultrasonic pen flush bath which is uh, nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia and I've got the nib out and I've dried it off and that black stuff that was on there looks like paint rather than old ink. In fact it looks like dried up India ink which scares me but I've scraped it off with my thumbnail and I'm sure that's gonna polish up nicely. I know that you can remove this nib from this bit here to get at that feed, but I don't think I need to. 
the nib looks in really, really good shape. I've cleaned out the uh, section and the barrel is clean as a whistle now. Same thing with the blind cap. So now I'm going to see about polishing up that 14 karat gold nib. And I might actually put it back in the section and put the barrel back on without any of the other parts just to give me more leverage and I'll be able to dip test that nib as well. I don't see any issues with the nib, but you never know, so. It's looking pretty shiny, but there's still a few micro scratches and things like that. So I think I'm gonna put a little metal polish on that and try to get some of the micro scratches out. There we go, it's gotten a lot of those micro abrasions out. I might go at it again. Of course, I got some of the polish into the feed, but I'll just take this nib unit off and put it back in the ultrasonic bath, pen flush, and that'll get all that extraneous polish out of there. There we go, all flushed out, looking pretty good. Under my loop, that looks like a fine nib, but we're going to give it a test here, dip it into some Waterman's and see what we get. Definitely a fine nib, 14 karat gold. And this is a 1955 to 59 Schaefer Clipper, thin model, TM, snorkel. And it's rough horizontally and vertically. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit of bounce to it, which is very nice. So that's going to need some micro mesh, but it writes very nicely, very nice. So now I'm going to work on teasing out silicone O-ring seal uh, from the touchdown unit. So I'm going to treat this restore as if that crack isn't there. And we're going to get it all working. And if it works, great. If not, then there might be a plastic weld in my future. So let's get that old ring out of there. This has been restored once already, I believe, because usually these rings from the original ones in the 50s were white not black so i'm just gonna dig around in there and that's really hard there i think i've broken it now there we go got it but the new ring should go in there nicely ready to accept the new ring so now we have the new ring and the clean barrel and some silicone grease and a toothpick all you need to replace this touchdown seal and this works for any of the touchdown fillers it doesn't have to be a snorkel the snorkel just uses the touchdown system so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, dredge this silicone o-ring in some grease get it all nice and lubed up and then we're going to introduce it into the barrel and we kind of have to squeeze it together and then we have to tease it so once you've lubed it you have to tease it that's what she said <laughs> Michael, please. There he is. Please. And you thought pen restoration was a boring sport. There we go. You got to tease it with the toothpick into the groove. This is not for the faint of heart. It's kind of like old people without Viagra. It's like shooting pool with a rope. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera. There we go. I had to uh, do it from the inside. Going down from the short end didn't seem to work. So I pushed it all down into the long side, pushed it up into place with this small rod. That seemed to work a little bit better than pushing it down from the top with the toothpick. I'm just going to add a little bit more grease to that. Thing is, with all this grease, you can't hang on to anything. Just wipe off the excess. And now that's ready to accept the touchdown tube but first we have to replace the ring inside the blind cap we get it out and use a small pair of tweezers to put this in place actually the best way to do this i discovered this earlier is to take your screw put it on the end of your screwdriver magnetic screwdriver really helps if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver but you have a magnet put a magnet on the shaft of your screwdriver and put the screw on the end of the screwdriver and it sticks there and then you can slide that into the sleeve and here's the most important thing of all 
P-T-G-D-S-O-F. Put the goddamn sleeve on first. And you put that in the barrel first. Slide it through. And then rather than putting the washer on the inside of the cap, screw it to the end of the screw first. And then you can push the cap on top until you get a thread going and tighten that down. There we go. Just hand tight. And we can put a little bit of silicone grease. <coughs> Can't even get it open anymore. It's so greasy. On the outside of that sleeve, just a thin coat to help that slide a little bit more easily. There we go. Well, unfortunately, I'm not feeling much suction. That should develop suction up to this point. And then that little groove right there releases that through that hole. But if that crack has gone past that groove, we're not getting any suction. We'll have to keep pushing ahead and see whether this might work for us. Well, I got the snorkel unit out of the sack protector. It's not an easy job. I had to do it off camera. I used my X-Acto blade to loosen those four flanges just slightly because they're crimped on to the end of this unit right here. And then I used this rod, which is just a piece of hanger that I cut off and pushed it through the sack, pounded on it through Bill's block. Now, the thing you have to be careful of is that if you pound straight down, you're gonna pound right into the tail of that snorkel and you might damage it. And I'm hoping that I haven't done that. So I kind of angled it to the side. You can see where I was punching on it right there not in the center. So all the old sack is on there, so I'm gonna scrape that off. And then we're gonna soak this. I'm gonna scrape it out of all of this guck. But we're gonna soak this in some rubbing alcohol in a glass and let it dissolve overnight. I'm gonna clean this whole thing out and make sure that that snorkel works properly. You might have to make sure that that hole is clear because that's where the ink flows, right down to the tip. In fact, the, the tip has come out just a bit, so I'm gonna have to push that feed in through the snorkel tube back to the back of that joint. So I got all of that old sack out of that sack protector. I didn't have to soak it in alcohol. Actually, the most of the sack just fell right out. And then I just had a few more bits in there. So I heated it a bit and lots of uh, cotton swabs and so forth and lots of soaking. And it's clean as a whistle. I actually pulled the, the snorkel tube right out of that black section. Scrape the nipple clean with my X-Acto blade to get all of that old sack and shellac off of there. It's uh, pretty much crystallized and so it chips off like pieces of glass. Then I heated the ebonite here and slid the snorkel tube back in to that section right at the very end now. It still protrudes a little bit at the front. I don't want to break that, so I didn't want to push it back in. I think it got tapped down a little bit when I tapped this out of the sack protector. So now we have to replace the sack and then get this back in the sack protector. So here's our sack. We can put it right on. So I'll need my sack spreader here. I need a sack spreader to get this on my sack spreader. And then we can fit it up under and on top of that nipple. There we go. Just like that. You can see we're going to have to cut it to size because it's too long. So it should go right down to there and that sack goes right to there. So we're going to trim this off. And so it looks like we have to trim it off to about there. And put it back on our sack spreader and we're going to shellac it eventually. But we want to test fit it first. Make sure it's all working correctly. Yeah, that should be perfect. So we need to shellac this bit on. Get my shellac pen out from the inky nib. Dial up a little bit of shellac. And we're just going to paint that nipple. We're not going to get any shellac on there. We don't want ink to stop flowing forever. And then we're going to spread our sack for real this time. Just give it a little bit of a twist, make sure it's straight, and then just add a bead of shellac right around there. And then we'll let it dry overnight. So here we are, it's the next day, and that sack has dried. And we're going to 
add some talc to it and slide it back into this sack protector and get it lined up and see if we can get it pushed back into that collar. I'm going to put my eyes on again for this and before I begin I'm going to widen that opening a little bit. I've got my knockout rod and it just happens to fit that opening perfectly so I'm just going to put it in there slightly and just rotate a little bit to open up that opening just a little bit all the way around and should make it easier for that to go in. So I'll add some talc, find the right orientation and I've got this steel tube that should help me push it down into that base. There we go, easy as cake, pie, piece of cake, piece of pie. Now the other thing I did overnight, I slid a pen into the end of this barrel to widen that crack and it actually goes all the way down to there but I widened it out I put a bead of CA glue along that seam and then I wrapped an elastic band around it to hold it tight overnight and I'm hoping that that will seal that crack and give me a vacuum I have to polish up this barrel anyway and micromesh out all those scratches so I might as well go at it get that CA glue off the outside but now that I've got the snorkel unit together, I have to replace the point seal, which goes right there, actually goes inside there. What we want to do with this is make sure that there's silicone grease on the outside of that um, and on the inside, but it you don't want to get any silicone grease in that snorkel tube. So the way you do that is you put some silicone grease on the outside of these edges, you put it into the section, and then you add silicone grease to the shaft of the snorkel tube, and that way when it goes through, it'll lubricate that little hole inside that seal. So we have our silicone grease in a toothpick, and I'm just gonna try to grease up the edges of this. Very difficult to do because it's such a tiny, tiny piece. This is where the dental probe comes in very, very handy. And we're going to drop that down inside the section and then screw that closed nice and tight. And there we go. And we add silicone grease to the snorkel tube. Find the right orientation of the snorkel tube to the feed. And there we go. And that whole unit is together again. We can add the spring. Make sure it's right inside that collar right there. Put that in the barrel. And our seal is at the bottom of that blind cap still. And we can screw that down hand tight. Yeah, I'm getting suction now. That's good. But the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So we can put the barrel back on. Slight twisting motion to get it over that spring. Some people will shellac that section down. I don't see any need for doing that at all. Make sure that snorkel goes back inside and it doesn't seem to go all the way for some reason. Now when I put that snorkel tube in. I don't think I got it in deep enough and I didn't have it turned enough in the right direction. It's slightly turned. I'll try that again. And there we go. That's better. It doesn't go all the way down in there because that's still sticking out a little bit. I don't think that should interfere with the operation of the pen, but we will soon find out because I need to try that touchdown filler with some ink. So I'm going to weigh the pen first without an ink. Press tear, extend that snorkel, and touch down, and drop the snorkel only into the ink, and we get zero ink. So I'd call that a failure. I'm pretty sure it has to do with this touchdown filler, but that's not creating a vacuum at all in there. So I might futz with this a little bit more. It seems pretty loose in there, so I'm wondering whether that silicone O-ring is the right size, whether that crack has caused it to get a little bit bigger, or whether there's actually still air coming through there, but it's not compressing the sack. And now how do I feel about this restoration or lack thereof. Well, I'm pretty disappointed, but I'm still optimistic that I might eventually get this pen to write. It might mean trying to find another barrel, if that is in fact the problem 
with this touchdown filler. I'm not getting any vacuum seal on this at all. And it feels like the touchdown system here is a little bit wobbly in there. So I'm wondering whether that seal that I used, that O-ring that I used in there, wasn't the right size. So I might experiment with the bigger one. Apparently there were two different sizes. Because I don't think that crack is the issue. It might have widened that barrel out so that it doesn't work anymore. I'm not sure. I have referenced my big book on fountain pen repair by Jim Marshall and Lawrence Oldfield. That was a gift from Bill. Thank you very much, Bill. And there's a whole section here on the Schaefer snorkel, all the different parts and the ways to restore it. And I particularly found this page here the most interesting because there's some red section here that says if the pen does not write or quits after a few lines, check these following things. They want to make sure that the fine slot near the end of the snorkel tip is unblocked, free of grease, and makes close contact with the end of the collector. Probing with a fine wire and washing in detergent, prefer preferably an ultrasonic tank, should cure the problems. Well, let's take a look at that. Because when this is closed, you saw during the restoration, when I tap that out from the top, I think I hit the center of that snorkel tube and I knocked the center feed system through that tube so it sticks out there. So that might be one of the reasons why ink isn't either getting in or out. But they also say, down here, number three, make sure that the sack end of the feed protrudes beyond the end of the snorkel tube and that the tube has not been shortened as it must penetrate through the plug by one millimeter at least. And I'm just going to take the snorkel out here for a second. So all the seals are all correct now. But at the bottom of that plug, you'll notice in the video that I shot before I put this back in, that that tube did not extend beyond the plug. So I think I've got three issues here. That has to recess back to here, to the start of the snorkel. This whole tube has to recess at least another one millimeter. And this has to provide a vacuum seal, which right now is not providing any. It should hiss when it gets to that point, and it's not. So that's the state of my repair right now. Um, at least I can go ahead and fix the pencil. The pencil didn't actually need any fixing at all. I, I just put a one millimeter lead. The actual dimension is 0.9 millimeters. So I put the lead in the pencil, and there it extends fine. This is one of those versions that you have to put the lead into the pencil and press it down, and then it will retract and extend if the leads aren't fed from the top. But that mechanism works fine. So I'm going to polish up that barrel and all that gold hardware and see what I can do about polishing up that cap. And maybe, eventually, I'll find a reason why this snorkel isn't working and I can restore this set. So this might be a part one. It might be the end of this pen after all. It doesn't owe anybody anything except my time and frustration. So I don't want to give up on it, especially for that nib. But I thought while I was at it, I would show you another fountain pen resurrection failure. Actually, I didn't even attempt restoring this pen. I just examined it. This was sent to me by pen friend Fabrice of uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thank you, Fabrice, for sending me this. This is a stipula speed. Fabrice sent it to me because he couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I figured it out. And that's because the piston on this piston filler leaks. And what happens is it leaks between that magnetic cap seal at the bottom of the nib there, and it leaks in the body right there and there. So this is a poorly designed pen in that you can't get that piston out and the only way you can get at the ink chamber is to pull, friction pull, the nib. Interesting concept, interesting pen with a magnetic cap on it that doesn't seem to really catch because you have to push the cap on that pen. So it's an interesting looking pen, but uh, in terms of functionality, it just doesn't work anymore. Thanks for sending it, Fabrice, but there's nothing more I can do to this pen other than admire it. But in the meantime, if any of you know what might be an issue with this snorkel or how I might fix it, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I made this.